No matter how long you've practiced something, the secret sauce to being able to play it on a gig is this guy. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Joseph Serrato here, J Serrato Music. Thanks for coming back and checking out another one of my quick lessons. Today we're gonna to talk about uh, improving on improvising and moving pentatonic scales around in different keys. There's tons of great uh, practice material for this out in the world. I really recommend the Chad LB PDFs um, on, on this concept. They're outstanding. Uh, also, this book by the great Jerry Braganzi, it's called Inside Improvisation Series, Volume 2 Pentatonics, really great book. Uh, those guys have explained the concept masterfully, way better than I could, and I just want to keep this short. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about how I work through this content, okay? I'm not the type of player that can just grab a PDF or take a book and run it down from beginning to end and then boom, like magic, like Neo in the Matrix, I can play this stuff on, on the gig. I felt like for a long time I was just bashing my head up against a wall um, practicing, practicing, practicing the same stuff over and over again, but it, it just wouldn't come out of my plane. What really helps me is to take concepts like this and break it down to a really small, basic piece of information. So one, make it small, break it down, and two, be very methodical about how I work through the, the material. That's how it's been working out for me. So let's talk about how I apply that to this concept right here of pentatonic scales. Just like anything else, you gotta crawl before you can walk. So you can't just expect to sound like Brecker or any of these other guys right at the beginning. So the key is to get familiar and get flexible with the scale. And that takes time, obviously, but it also takes a plan of attack. The first step for me in getting familiar and getting flexible with this scale in all 12 keys is to pick a shape and Move it, move that shape starting on the same scale tone up and down in half steps and whole steps. So let's, let's just pick the most basic shape, which is going up the first four notes of the scale, right? So D, F, G, A. All right, let's do that going up in half steps. Descending in half steps. Whole steps. That that was obviously starting on the one every time. But do it starting on the three, starting on the four, starting on the five, starting on the seven, right? They all sound different. Here's starting on the seven. It's kind of cool sound. That's step one, getting familiar and getting flexible where you can play a basic shape and move that same shape up and down in whole steps and half steps. If you can't do that, don't go on to the rest of the hard, harder stuff you're gonna be bashing your head against the wall. I don't want you to do that, okay? Always work this with a metronome or some sort of loop or backing track. It, it's gonna make things a lot, go a lot easier. To get super familiar with moving up and down and have some, some whole steps, you can alternate the direction of the pattern. So I'm gonna play one, three, uh, four, five in D, and then I'll play five, four, three, one in E flat. And it sounds like this. Okay, I'm playing the same pattern and I'm going up a half step, but I'm playing it in reverse order. But it's still getting me comfortable and familiar with moving up and down in half steps. So let's play it and I'm going to keep playing it. And I'm going to move up and down in half steps, right? <laughs> Let's try modulating, changing key, and using a half step or a whole step. So I'm going to play it super slow. So here you go. Right? 
And if I wanted to keep the chain going, I could keep going to F sharp, right? But I could come back down if I'm at the top of my instrument. I can come back down. So let's do like F sharp and, and come back down. But every time I change keys, I'm going up a half step, right? Right? Every time I change keys, every four notes, I was in a different key, a half step up, where you can change keys and you can do it with smooth voice, voice leading a half step away. You can do the same thing a whole step away. But if you've done the work in step one, this is going to come faster. See? So this is the whole theme of taking it into small pieces, going in order so that you can actually get stuff accomplished. That's a big advantage to doing things this way. Your ear becomes really familiar with these sounds and with these shapes. And if you can't hear it, you're not going to be able to play it. Half of the, the purpose of this, half the intent is to get it under your fingers. But the other half, and it's equally important, is to get it in your ears. I wasn't able to start really using this stuff until I could hear it. And I was familiar with it, as familiar with it in my ears as I was in my fingers. The fingers is actually the easy part. But you need to practice with the intention of locking it in your ears of what all of these different sounds and shapes feel like, what they sound like. The secret sauce to being able to play it on the gig, no matter how long you've practiced something, the secret sauce to being able to play it on a gig is it's gotta be here in your ears. You have to have understanding of what it sounds like in your ears or it's just not gonna come out. I'm telling you that because I wanna save you a lot of frustration, like, ah, I couldn't play it. Why didn't I play that? It's because you couldn't hear it. That's bottom line. If you can hear it, you'll be able to play it. Because if you've practiced it enough to where you're hearing it, your fingers are probably there too. So I'm going to end it right here. If you've gotten through steps one and steps two, you're doing great. Just keep applying the same principle of, of uh, making it small and, and being organized and structured and how you, how you plan going through all this stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say goodbye with that uh, and I'm getting ready to head on vacation for a few days and I'll see y'all next week. See y'all later.